Okay, so before we get into this video, we just got to talk about the game, because this game is kind of what started this entire discussion in the first place, but it was a really odd game. The Wings won 5-3 against the last place San Jose Sharks in regulation yesterday. And on paper, you might say, okay, 5-3 win, it's up by two goals, the Wings probably played well, I mean, they're playing against a bad team, so of course, like, they won. What else is there to say? The thing is, if you were watching this game, you probably felt a little bit anxious and maybe towards the end felt a little bit relieved that the Wings ended up winning because this game was no means a super easy walk in the park for Detroit. The Sharks played well, they had the lead at the start of the third period, and things were kinda looking off at this point in the game. Halfway mark of the third, 3-2 San Jose, Barabanov gives the Sharks the lead and the Wings ultimately have to come back with a three straight goal performance to end things off with the 5-3 to three score. David Perron scored with a minute 30 left to give the Wings the one goal lead and then Rasmussen on the empty net. The guy doesn't even smile at the end. He looks super frustrated when he gets the goal. Ultimately, this was a really evenly paced hockey game, which is a good thing for San Jose, maybe not so good for Detroit, because if you're a team on the outside of the playoffs looking in, you want to get that win streak started again, maybe matching head-to-head -head against the San Jose Sharks and actually having a close game isn't the best way to go out there and do that. But I digress, the Wings still won. You can be happy with the win for sure. I'm just going out there and saying that this was not the easiest win out there, and against the opponent in San Jose, you could definitely say that raises some concerns. Either way though, part of the reason this Wings and Sharks game was interesting was because you had yourselves a guy on the opposite team in San Jose in Philip Zadina, who was trying to make his presence known. And boy, could you see this guy's presence out there on the ice. He didn't score any points, he didn't get himself any goals, but you still had yourselves what was a very interesting showcase of Philip Zadina that complements his 10 points in 33 games played this year. He's on pace for around 23 points, which would match his career high with the Wings of 24 points in 74 games played in 2021-2022, and he's on pace for about 9 goals on the year as well which, if you're paying attention, would still match the 10 goals that he had two seasons ago. Now, the reason we're making this video and the reason we're titling it the way we are is because after yesterday's Wings and Sharks game wherein the Wings won 5-3, you saw yourselves this post made on the R Red Wings sub that has some really interesting comments and some interesting ideas from Red Wings fans. So, can we all agree that Philip Zadina is a bust? Chainsaw Diaries goes out there and writes... Let's go out there and read some of the discussion that Wings fans have after this Philip Zadina showcase. Yeah, just by the play where he was wide open in front and shoveled the backhand out of panic? Yeah. Laughing emoji, this guy's kind of a bust. Also, Alex Lyon won us that game. He was crazy good, that play stood out to me as well though. I was thinking, okay, I don't want you to score against us, but what are you doing, Philip Zadina? This is just part of what has made Philip Zadina such an ineffective player compared to what we thought he'd be able to be. In his junior days, the reason he was even taken as a top pick in the 2018 draft, he had a cerebral sort of assessment to the way he would create offense. 44 goals in 57 games played in the QMJHL was no fluke. This guy was a goal-scoring machine who just had the confidence and swagger to carry him through. Now sure, you could say QMJHL hockey has not not really the best defending out there. The overall pace of play is a lot slower than the NHL, which is very self-explanatory. But upon reaching higher levels of play, Philip Sedina just couldn't get that goal-scoring touch to translate. And a lot of it has to do with plays like these, where he panics, he doesn't take his time, he doesn't take the best shots. And when he does try to take a good shot, he ends up flubbing it. This guy had a really good wrister back in 2017-18. He scored a bunch of goals in the process because of it. He was over a goal a game, or at a goal a game, excuse me, at that year's World Juniors as a double underage player. So you could understand why there was such a good amount of hype for this guy. 
It's just, at the NHL level, he could not put it together, and it's why he wasn't able to succeed as a Red Wing. Sure, he boosted up his defensive game. Everybody said, oh yeah, Philip Sedina, you know, he's good along the boards, he can do this, and he got 24 points, so if he's able to at least improve a little bit, then maybe we've got a player, and then he didn't. He had 7 points in 30 games played last year with Detroit. Things didn't work out. He gave up on the team. He forfeited the contract because he wanted another opportunity. And now in San Jose, he isn't particularly much better. I mean, he's got 10 points in 33 games compared to 7 points in 30 games last year. Not too amazing in comparison. Now, going back over to the Reddit thread, the next comment goes out there and says this, The only nets that Philip Sedina ever filled with pucks were in our dreams. And that is a damning comment because this guy went out there and assured to Montreal, he assured to Arizona, Hey, these guys are going to regret passing on me. I'm going to fill their pucks or their nets with pucks. Pucks, and he was very salty about that. It was a kind of, you know, Shane Wright, Montreal number one situation. Similar to that, not gonna lie. But at the very least, the Montreal Canadiens got some good production out of Jesperi Kotkaniemi. The Red Wings, I mean, they didn't really have any seasons where you could say he was too amazing, aside from that one year in 21-22. Tough, eh? Really, really tough. Zadina wanted a goal so bad last night. He had several chances. He just cannot score. Yeah, he was taking every chance to try and score. He shot one straight into Lyon's chest and I was like, oh yeah, that's the Philip Zadina I know. Zadina was a plus one, plus minus last night, while Kane had a zero rating on his plus minus. Zadina confirmed better player than Patrick Kane. Yeah, they're just kind of memeing over there. You then had yourselves another reply. This is more of the realistic and nihilistic take on the matter. I still remember the night we drafted him. At the time, we still had lots of forward power in guys like Larkin, Mantha, Athanasiu, Goose, etc. It didn't make sense to me to take a forward sixth overall in 2018. What kills me is who we left on the board. I really wanted Bouchard, but we also left Hughes out to dry. We could have had Quinn effing Hughes. But wasn't Zadina supposed to go top three? When he fell to six, it seemed like a steal. Exactly. At the time, it was perceived that the Wings got a great deal with Zadina at sixth overall. Hindsight is 2020, though, which would be a career stat line for Zadina. Oh, that's nasty. 2020 would be a career stat line. That's kind of jokes, isn't it? There wasn't really a bad scouting report on Zadina at the time of the draft. Some scouts even compared him to Hosa. And honestly, I don't really see the Hosa comparison. I saw the sniping, I saw the offensive creativity, I saw the pizzazz there. Hosa played a little bit more of a sniping power style, and he's a little bit bigger too. I didn't really see Hosa much as a comparable back then, but... Realistically, I mean, Philip Zadina with all this stuff going on about him, it is tough to see that for a guy who was sixth overall, who progressed in the way that he did, this was a guy who busted. And I don't think at this point there's much to redeem Philip Zadina into the long term. He's not going to be the 40 goal guy that we thought he'd be back when he was drafted sixth overall. He's 24, so there still is a little bit of time left if you wanted to say that. But at the end of the day, I mean, this is a player that definitely did not progress in the way that we wanted to. And with hindsight included, it's very clear to see that from this 2018 draft, there were so many players that were worth the pick at sixth overall. Philip Zadina was not one of them. Quinn Hughes is great, Evan Bouchard, Noah Dobson, these guys are all top-tier defensemen in the NHL, and for a Red Wings squad that at the time boasted up a whole bunch of forward prospects, you could very well say that this pick may have been one of the worst ones there. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below about Philip Zadina, how yesterday's game ended up going, how Zadina was trying his behind off to score a goal, only to be deemed unsuccessful. Does that surprise you in any way? What are your thoughts on the way he's going to develop into the future? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishaj Rolls 99. And bye.